In the late 1980s, Switzerland witnessed a huge increase in injecting drug use and was hit hard by the harms associated with it, such as HIV, overdose, and crime. From this short movie by the HCLU, you can learn how the country successfully resolved these problems through the introduction of an innovative national drug policy. In the beginning, when the first large open drug scenes emerged in big cities such as Zurich, the situation seemed desperate. In that uh, needle park, it became absolutely a misery, a misery. Thousands of people injecting there, people were living there, it was full of dirt and shit. A lot of uh, overdose, the mortality rate was extremely high, criminality was very high. In the beginning we tried to, to handle it alone with uh, police, law enforcement, but uh, it was obvious that it was not working anymore. The main indicator of how the old system didn't work was the large proportion of injectors being not in any kind of treatment. Ironically, the open drug scene helped because that way you got media exposure and it was one of the main topics in the whole country. So the political system had to do something, the politicians had to do something, solutions had to be found and they started to build alliances uh, between the different sectors involved. Everybody realized this is going nowhere and something has to be done. And this was the starting point for private initiatives. Also civil servants who on their own initiative started some harm reduction uh, approaches without formal consent even under the threat of becoming punished. One of the most important new interventions was the distribution of sterile needles and syringes among drug users to stop the sharing of injecting equipment and to prevent blood-borne infections such as HIV and hepatitis. The municipal authorities opened supervised injection sites to create a safer and more hygienic environment to avoid street drug use and to increase their ability to intervene in the case of overdose. Besides the scaling up of access to abstinence-oriented treatment and prevention programs, for those who could not stop, doctors prescribed opioid drugs like methadone in order to improve their social and health situation and to reduce crime. For whom no other forms of treatment worked, doctors started to provide medical heroin to get them off the streets, save their lives and improve their situation. Our authorities and police did not crack down on these first initiatives, but they waited. They wanted to see what's coming out of it. We tried to, to work together with other um, departments, especially the, the social, uh, social one, and uh, we developed uh, a new strategy. It's called the Four Pillars Strategy. The four pillars of the Swiss drug policy are prevention, treatment, repression and harm reduction. What was the reaction of international organizations, UN, INCB, to, to, to the new methods you started to use? More than skeptical. They didn't like it. INCB warned against uh, doing that in other countries. And uh, still at the same time they allowed us to import the necessary amount of morphine to produce the heroin to prescribe, because otherwise we had no heroin in the country. WHO was different. WHO set up an international expert group from the very beginning, and they did a very good job in acknowledging the positive outcomes. The Swiss drug policy was carefully evaluated several times, and the numbers speak for themselves. Heroin use was reduced significantly. The annual number of new heroin users declined from 850 in 1990 to 150 in 2002. 
Between 1991 and 2004, the rate of drug-related deaths declined by more than 50%. Levels of new drug-related HIV infections were divided by eight within 10 years. According to a 1999 study, the country witnessed a 90% reduction of property crimes committed by drug users. About 70% of our injectors are in some kind of treatment and the majority of those in substitution treatment, there is no more need for those to go to the illegal market uh, and to engage in criminal activities for getting the money to get their heroin. It was one of the concerns when we started heroin assisted treatment that people when they get the heroin they will stay on it forever. They will never stop. Fact is that the average time of participation in a program is something less than three years. People find a job, people find new contacts, social contacts outside the drug scene. Many of these who had a long history of uh, fighting between their families and themselves get some new relation to their families. More than 60% go to another treatment. And the majority of those who go to another treatment go back to method of maintenance. And it's uh, about one-fourth of those who leave effect, in effect try detoxification and drug-free treatment. My unit runs four contact center in Zurich uh, with safe injection and safe consumption rooms for drug users. So in, in four of my um, facilities uh, founded by the city, I paid the taxpayers' money uh, every day, yesterday, today, tomorrow, about two to three kilos of illegal cocaine or heroin are consumed. If you want to, to, to uh, run such a, a system, you have to have a very good cooperation uh, on, a, on a very operative level. How does this cooperation look like in, in everyday life? Um, well, we are on the street and also the social street workers are on the street and they see each other daily and they talk to each other and uh, we really cooperate. And if they see something that's not, not working, they call us. And also on the other hand, um, we, we call them. And so it's really a, a cooperation. Around four contacts and one is uh, just opposite the stock markets and uh, opposite the, uh, a museum, art museum. Um, and it works. It works because of our good cooperation and because we run these institutions together with the neighborhood. How would you summarize the key principles behind the success of drug, uh, Swiss drug policy? Well, I think uh, one of the major factors was the high visibility of the problems and the, the size of the problems. So everybody could see something has to be done. The main thing is implementation. And for good implementation at the local level, you need good collaboration. Stop the fights between police forces, social workers, street workers we had beforehand and work together. We have excellent collaboration with the medical world, medical associations, because we couldn't have this high coverage in substitution treatment without private doctors participating in it. In fact, 60% of methadone maintenance is office-based in private practice. In Switzerland, we have direct democracy as an important element of the political system. These uh, new strategies were attacked by some political groups, but then there was a vote and it was confirmed by the people. So it has uh, the whole four pillar strategy has a very high legitimacy because they received large majorities in these uh, referendum votes. What would you recommend for other countries who are struggling with the same problems? The situation in Switzerland, or the example of Zurich, shows that it's really in other ways possible. And I recommend all of them uh, just uh, have a look at it, come and, and look at, uh, at Zurich, how we do it. 
If you would like to learn more about Swiss drug policy, read the new report of the Open Society Institute entitled From the Mountaintops, The Evolution of Drug Policy Change in Switzerland and Its Lessons for the World.